you're gonna be reunited with your old pal, Mike Smith, with um, Art Collector, and you all have already won a classic together with Jocelyn Meyer, a little bit different running style, but just talk about your association with Mike and getting uh, teaming with him on Art Collector for this race. Well, of course, I've had an association with Mike for probably 30 years, I suppose, and uh, uh, he, he rode for us when, when I first went to New York in 1987. I went full-time in uh, to New York. Mike was in New York riding at that point, and uh, we've won a lot of races together. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Louis Saez had, had ridden Art Collector the last three times, done a very good job with him and, and fit him very well. And, but, uh, you know, of course he's committed to uh, the horse that was the Belmont winner and, and Travers winner. So, uh, you know, he, I, I understand the fact that he couldn't take off him to ride, but, you know, I think our, between Mr. Lunsford and myself, I think we both settled on, on Mike to take control, you know, for Breeders' Cup Day. I mean, we know he's, he knows the track, he's experienced. Um, I think Mike, you know, he, he, he would fit this horse. I mean, I th you know, the horse likes to be tactical and up close and I think, I think Mike fits him. Mike fits a lot of horses, but uh, uh, we felt like we had experience on our, on our side. And actually, Bruce and I are both excited to have Mike just because we both had such a long association with him um, over a long period of time. Uh, speaking of um, uh, Bruce Lunsford, you've had a long association with him, and also Tommy Drury, who had him. What did they tell you about Art Collector? And just talk about getting, you know, picking up Art Collector this year. Well, I was fortunate enough to be in New York, and, and Bruce wanted him in New York, and that's how I wound up with him. Tommy had had the horse and done a great job with him, and, you know, you can look at his form from last year, and he won some very nice races with him. And, you know, he gave him a great start, and I was just the lucky recipient of him because we, Bruce wanted him on the East Coast for some of those races that we, that we ran in Saratoga and, and Belmont. And, uh, you know, Tommy filled me in on the horse. I mean, we talked about it, you know, before uh, he sent him to me, and, and really the, the horse is very straightforward. I mean, he's a nice horse to train, and... and uh, uh, you know, I think he told me everything I needed to know and, and we just took it from there. But, you know, I was lucky enough to get him. He'd had some time off and he had one race under his belt uh, in Kentucky just before I got him. And it probably wasn't a real suitable race for him. I mean, it was probably wasn't his distance maybe. And, and uh, but he came to me ready to run and we just took it from there and, uh, Art collectors done the rest. Is there a process when you get an older horse that's been in a, he'd been in that whatever established training program um, with Mr. Drury, and then you pick him up? Just what are some of those initial things that you do when you get a new horse into the barn? You know, of course, I guess we have to hope that the the horse adapts to our style. I mean, I suppose every trainer has, you know, certain things that they do and a certain style of training and. And although, you know, many of us do very similar things, uh, I, I guess we, we, we try to do, you know, what's, what's easy and right for the horse individually. But, you know, uh, sometimes the horse actually adapts to us as much as uh, us adapting to the horse. But, you know, the horse fell right into, you know, the training regimen that we had him in and and like I say he was ready to run when we got him we just you know continued on and and he's he's done very well I mean he you know at the moment he, he looks great and he's coming off three really good races and we know we're stepping into deep water we're trying you know a new group of horses and we know they're the very best that uh, we're gonna run up against and we're adding another furlong to the uh, to what he's ever run and uh you know we've got to find that out i mean you never know it until they do it but he's indicated to us that we're 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 we haven't discussed it a lot because he just seems like you know he, he hasn't been backing up in his races and he seems like he's been strong at the finish so we're we're not hesitant at all about the mile and a quarter 
his last race winning that grade one was huge. I know from talking to, to Bruce because it, I mean, it, 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 it took that pressure off because, you know, he's got a stallion career somewhere now. Can you sort of talk about that and, and does it, that make it, did that make it easier to decide to go in the classic and, and try the mile and a quarter? Oh, nat- naturally. I mean, I think coming into a, a race when you've got to, you know, you've got to put up a lot of money to run in this race. So you want to see see the horse, you know, coming in off a of good form and, and uh, come with, he won a major race. And, and uh, you know, we know that, you know, this is a big challenge, but, you know, as far as a stallion career for a horse, if we can run well in here, I mean, it, it's going to just do nothing but enhance his, his value and his, his appeal. Uh, actually, you know, I, I trained the second dam of this horse for Bruce. It was one of the first horses that Bruce had purchased.